Hi, welcome to the Brocade Campus Feature Explainer Series. I'm Terry Henry. Um, this time around, we're going to look at HP or Aruba ProVision, or what you might know as ProCurve, uh, configuration to Brocade ICX. Um, and in this case, we're going to look at VLANs, so basically v VLAN configuration uh, with IP helper addresses and uh, IP addresses on the VLANs to route between the VLANs. So uh, really three things in one here. What you'll see though is the ProVision configuration is almost identical to Brocade ICX. So there are some very minor differences, but for the most part, you know, if you're migrating from HP Aruba to Brocade, um, or even if you're just trying to connect an HP Aruba to a Brocade and, and uh, figure out what the equivalent VLAN commands are, um, you'll see that it is almost the same. So uh, let's have a look. So on the left side here, we have the HP ProCurve configuration. And I didn't make this up. I took it off of their website. It was an existing example configuration um, and just built the equivalent Brocade ICX uh, just so you can see um, the, the exact um, interpretation. So um, first we do an enable and a config T or config term or configure terminal, um, which is identical on the Brocade side, right? Enable config T. I could have typed config term if I wanted. Um, and then they turn on IP routing with an IP routing command. We don't need to do that. Um, the, as soon as you put an IP address on a VLAN or turn on router OSPF or router RIP or router BGP or whatever it is, the device assumes you want to route, right? So we don't need to turn on IP routing. Okay, so then um, really what we're trying to accomplish here is there's three VLANs. There's VLAN 20, and in VLAN 20, um, we're presuming there's a DHCP server, right? So if you're a client in this VLAN, you're gonna send out a DHCP broadcast request and you're gonna get a reply back from the DHCP server and it's gonna work properly. If you're in VLAN 30 or 40, we're assuming uh, that there is not a DHCP server. Your DHCP server is in VLAN 20. So we need to take those DHCP broadcasts uh, from clients in 30 and 40 and turn them into a unicast and send them to um, the, the DHCP servers, there's, there's two of them, in VLAN 20. So that's what we're going to achieve. So first we create the VLAN 20, we untag B3 and B4, and in case you're wondering, this came from a, a 5304XL, this came from a chassis, and in the chassis, in H, HP chassis, Instead of using slot numbers, they use letters for slots. So slot one would be A, slot two would be B, slot three would be C, etc. So this is slot two, port three and four. And then we assign an address 10.10.20.1 slash 24 to that VLAN. So our equivalent on the brocade side, uh, we have VLAN 20. We untag those ports the same way. So Ethernet uh, unit one, slot two, port three, unit one, slot two, port four. Um, so because this is a stackable device, it has the additional uh, unit number in front. Um, then we create something called a router interface. Uh, we called it VE20, Virtual Ethernet 20. Uh, and then we assign the IP address onto interface VE20. So our way of thinking is that a VLAN is a layer two entity and a, a VE is a layer three, right? So we don't let you put an IP address directly on a layer two uh, VLAN. Right? We assign a router interface to that VLAN and assign the IP address uh, to that VE or that, that, that router interface. So um, the same thing with things like uh, you know, uh, putting it in an OSPF area or the IP helper address. Those are all done on the VE because there's, those are not layer three um, uh, feature. Uh, those are not layer two features that belong to a VLAN. They're layer three features that belong to a, a router interface. But anyway, that's just a different thought process between us and HP. So then we created VLAN 30. We untag slot one port one or A1 on the HP side. We assign the IP address 30.1, and then we assign two IP helper addresses, right? 20.2 and 20.3. So what that's going to do is it's going to take uh, from from client devices inside VLAN 30, it takes their DHCP broadcast packets, turns them into unicast, and sends them simultaneously 
to the two DHCP servers, um, 20.2 and 20.3, which as you see belong to the subnet of VLAN 20, right? And so um, we send it to both servers at the same time. Um, and so for redundancy purposes, if you lose one of your DHCP servers, that's fine. Or whoever replies first is going to uh, give out the offer, right? It's going to send a DHCP offer packet to that client. That client will act that or acknowledge that um, that offer, and then the other one uh, will just put their their IP address back into the pool. Okay, um, and so the equivalent brocade side, we created VLAN 30, we untagged slot one port one, we created a router interface called VE30. On um, VE30, we assign 30.1 slash 24, and then we assign our two IP address helpers. So we, the only difference here is in this command, we use a, a number, so you can have multiple D, uh, IP helper addresses. We just want you to number them so that um, if you want to delete one, you can delete it, you know, out of the, uh, by number or, or whatever the case. But anyway, so, but that's, that's the only difference. Otherwise, the commands are identical. Uh, and then lastly, VLAN 40, untag C1, so, so slot 3, port 1, uh, add the IP 40.1. The same two IP helpers we used in the previous VLAN, we're going we're gonna to send to VLAN 20 to those DHCP servers. And again, your DHCP servers are going to require a scope, right? So the scope um, is going to be addresses in those different subnets, and the 30.0/24 and the 40.0/24 um, is going to it's going to require a scope of address from the DHCP server, but that's outside the uh, outside the scope of this video anyway. Um, and then lastly, we did a write mem to copy that running configuration to the startup configuration. Uh, so on the brocade side, VLAN 40. We untag I didn't have a slot three, so I used port two on slot one. So I untagged Ethernet one slash one slash two. I create a router interface called VE40. On interface VE40, I assign 10.10.40.1 slash 24, the same two IP helper addresses. And lastly, I did a write memory exactly the same as the HP. So, you know, this is what, 90% the same, right? Other than our thought process on where an IP address and an IP helper address gets assigned. HP does it on the on the VLAN. We do it on a router interface. But aside from that philosophy, the configuration is pretty much identical and you should have no problem migrating from HP Aruba to Brocade. Okay, so thanks for joining me today and uh, take care.